Today's going to be a different kind of video. We're taking a look at the PS2 mouse and comparing it against the latest and greatest USB mice. And you're probably wondering, what is this brand? The 1980s? I wish it was. But on a more serious note, today we're going to take a look at this mouse, which I picked up at a junk store probably over a year and a half ago for a dollar, and I've been meaning to do this video for a while, but we're going to be comparing it against these other two mice with 100 FPS on a 100 Hz monitor and see if there's any difference in the input lag. And that's the total time it takes your mouse by the time you click it to actually put out a signal on your monitor. So total system input lag. Today we're going to be testing this port versus the USB mice. Now we already know from previous experience that the Logitech G302 is practically one of the best mice you can get out there in terms of how responsive it is. So seeing how the PS2 mouse goes against this is gonna be a big eye opener for me personally, but also let's go through a little bit of history of why the PS2 port still exists. The PS2 port was designed over 31 years ago in 1987 by IBM, named after their personal systems to computer. However, it wasn't until 1999 that we saw the first commercially available optical mouse. This was introduced from Microsoft with their IntelliEye Explorer. If you guys remember the CS 1.6 days, this became a very popular name for the mouse to use if you were playing this game competitively. Myself, using one of these back in the day. Now it was a great upgrade over the trackball mice, which were just terrible after they got some dust buildup in, you had to clean them out regularly, and even then you didn't get a consistent tracking experience. Though of course, what about the laser mouse, which is inherently a bit different to the optical mouse, that came into play in 2004, although originally designed in 1999, by Sun Microsystems, it took Logitech in 2004 a partnership to introduce this mouse with the MX1000. And later in 2009, since in those five years people realized that they didn't track properly on glass surfaces, they introduced the dark field laser. And you could actually see this on camera, although you couldn't see it, it was invisible to the human eye. A very weird dilemma that I thought came out with the filming of a camera. However, the PS2 port itself does still have its benefits in today's market. For instance, if you're in the data backup industry, there may be very crucial data that you just can't risk getting leaked into the wrong hands. And so with a PS2 keyboard and mouse, you're then able to disable all the USB ports on that system, and hence not allowing anyone to put a USB key in and copy off data. Also, PS2 keyboards themselves have full N key rollover. Essentially what this is, is if you can press as many keys as you like at the same time, and they will all register. Typically on cheaper USB keyboards, you can only press up to six keys at one time. More expensive USB keyboards, on the other hand, do integrate the PS2 interface into their keyboards and hence allowing them to support full N key rollover. That's why you do see some USB keyboards with PS2 adapters and they will work via a PS2 port. Though another reason, of course, is battery savings on laptops. Laptops still use the PS2 interface on both their keyboards and also their trackpads. And this is because they work via a system known as the interrupt system. This is when you press a key, it will send a signal directly to the CPU, as opposed to a USB, which will pull itself to the USB controller. And so what you're allowed to do here is now save battery because you don't need the keyboard and the trackpad on at all times. As opposed to the USB keyboard and mice, they sometimes have to be on at all times, hence draining power on a laptop device. And the last benefit to the PS2 port itself is of course that legacy support and the fact that it will work in any BIOS. So it's great for computer technicians who need to get settings right and make things work from the get-go as sometimes USB devices can introduce their own problems. Though nowadays on systems, instead of having two PS2 ports, they're generally integrated into one. And a cool fact about this port is, is that you can use a splitter and still get a PS2 keyboard and PS2 mouse to plug into this device. However, with that being said, if you do wish to use a PS2 keyboard and mouse, then you will have to plug it in before your system boots. As if you plug it in and then you try to use it, you'll then have to restart your system. As opposed to a USB mouse or keyboard, you can plug it in and it'll generally work from the get-go without having to restart your system. 
And of course, now it's time to get onto that part that y'all have been waiting for, and it is the results. The PS2 mouse by, I don't even know who, it doesn't even have a brand name on it. Uh, this scored uh, just the same as the other USB mice. Uh, I was kind of a little bit sad to see um, this mouse uh, just do the same. I was hoping there would be at least a little bit of an edge to this port because I have heard that it does give an edge on the keyboards. And so with that, I'm gonna be testing the keyboards in a future video. Uh, but this one here, it scored exactly the same as these other two mice, uh, which in ways is really good news for the USB mice because uh, they uh, tout themselves as being gaming mice. And I know in the past I have tested particular mice over the USB ports and they have been slower than the G302. That's a definite. Uh, so what we see here is that they're scoring between 60 and 70 milliseconds all across the board. That's uh, from when I click the button. And by the way, I'm clicking it really fast and that's to weed out variants. When I'm doing that, uh, we're noticing that it's about six to seven frames delayed and each frame represents 10 milliseconds on the 100 FPS camera. And so the monitor itself, of course, having a 100 uh, FPS cap in Vulcan on Wolfenstein 2 and also being on a 100 hertz monitor, it's a really good test to see how many frames we are delayed by the time we click this button and hence why it's sometimes 60 milliseconds and sometimes it's uh, 70 milliseconds. But it was good to see that across all three mice, the results were the same. So what that says is that the PS2 mouse here is the original. It's uh, pretty much the base standard for having no or low input lag. And then we look at the G302 and that's got, of course, really good uh, low input lag. And then we look at the Zowie FK2 and that also scored in the same field. So those two USB mice, they're the mice that I'm using here in the channel at the moment. They're both really good mice. But at least for me with this PS2 mouse, I can now put it on the shelf and not worry that I'm losing any advantages by switching over to a USB mouse. But of course, PS2 port, it's not going anywhere, at least in the near future. It does have its benefits. Uh, me personally though, I do use a USB mouse and keyboard nowadays. I found on the PS2 keyboard itself that very rarely with an overclock system, uh, my system will crash out sometimes, very rarely. And if now if that happens while I'm editing a video, there could be problems. I have found on this PS2 mouse though, while I was using it for a little bit of time, there was no crashing whatsoever. So very weird dilemma that one, the crashing. I'll have to look into a little bit more. But one cool thing to note is if you guys are on a budget and you are getting into gaming, then something like this is not a bad option. I mean, you can still pick up PS2 uh, mice for around about $5. And at least the good thing with that is, is that you'll know, at least with the PS2 mouse, that you'll just be getting straight gaming. There's no uh, BS on a $5 PS2 mouse. You just put it on, plug it in, and away you go. You're gaming, and you get the lowest input lag possible. As opposed to some of these other USB mice, I haven't tested them yet, but they could introduce delays from anywhere from 10 to 20 milliseconds. I have seen uh, 10 milliseconds plus on $50 mice too. The one thing I will say before I get on out of here and one thing that will be sorely missed with this PS2 mouse is quite simply the simplicity of it. The shape is honestly for me perfect. It's a similar shape to the Logitech G3. And this was a mouse that was designed a long time ago. So in ways I feel like the gaming mice industry is kind of losing focus on where they're going. I mean some of these designs of these mice coming out nowadays are just ridiculous. Uh, for me personally, as a fingertip gripper, this mouse here represents the perfect shape. It's the original design, it's so perfect, the weight balance is great, it's ambidextrous as well, so if you're left-handed, you can take advantage of it, and all they need to do is whack a couple of side buttons on it, and you've got yourself a really good gaming mouse. This mouse here weighed in 70 grams, it's absolutely awesome for fingertip grippers who are playing RTS or flick shooting in FPS. And also on that note, there's no acceleration built in. So pro gamers mean they might wanna just think about using something like this if they still exist and they need that set DPI. So not too bad after all with the PS2 laser mouse. It's just for me personally, I'm so used to my G302 now the way that works, the way it moves, I don't think I can change over to anything else. I actually tried changing over to the FK2 and that didn't go so well. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna see 
any other videos like this. I love going off on these crazy tangents sometimes. Today's video was a lot of fun to make and it gave me some answers that I've sort of been curious to find out all this time. Although it was kind of as expected, if you ask me. But anyway, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Valora, if you guys remember this mouse, it was very popular in the CSGO community. As <laughs> moment, they're both really good mice. Uh, but this PS2 mouse, I... Uh, one advantage of a laggy USB mouse, however, would be the fact that if you click on clickbait, you're now delayed by 10 to 20 milliseconds when you click on that clickbait. But if you guys are in the market for a mouse, uh, you... So now we're going to be moving on to the results.